Sub man 25 gamers welcome to um this is gonna be kind of like an ebook but not really i don't know what I, exactly i'll call it um i was gonna do i was gonna do like this thing i did last year so like uh it was called becoming elite defensively and i'm gonna i'm still it's gonna be similar to that um for those of you who were with me last year and, and saw saw that uh and then i was gonna i was gonna do that and i was gonna do a uh, four or three defensive guide uh, the, the, uh, from what I did last year I was going to do part two this year and it was going to be a, uh, an ebook I was going to write it out and it was going to have uh, all that and and then the what do you know college hit me and I just didn't have the time to do that so instead of doing that what I'm going to do is it's going to be all video footage and it's going to be a weekly format Okay, so what you're going to get is, you're going to get um, every week on, I can't, I don't know what day it will be, but every week you're going to get um, your 6 o'clock video from me will be a a series on becoming elite defensively. I'm going to break that down. And then um, sooner than later, hopefully by the end of that series, by the time I'm done breaking down all the basic principles uh, of that, then I'm going to release to you a guidebook with for with all the setups and everything I said in the and then all those videos with it. So what will happen is basically it will somewhat be like an ebook, but it won't it won't be uh, it won't be all in there. It'll have like video for this part portion. There won't be any written for this because it just takes too long to write it to be honest. And uh, I just don't have that time right now. But it will have the written setups for the pressure setups and the play setups. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about that or need more information, let me know in the comments uh, below. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be it, I'm going to release it to you hopefully with uh, by Christmas break. Uh, hopefully by Christmas break because I, I really want to do a lot with this series. I, I, I enjoy uh, this part of my YouTube channel, these weekly videos, and uh, spe uh, more specifically defense in general, talking about it uh, and, and seeing what you guys think about what I have to say and all that. So last year, you guys uh, hopefully remember, uh, leading up to Madden NFL uh, 20. Five, we did what was called Madden 25 training camp uh, for for offense and defense, and in in the training camp we basically went over the basic principles of defense and how you can become better than you are right now in, in different concepts. And there will be uh, links to those videos in the description below. Hopefully, if I can remember to put them in there, uh, I have to write myself a sticky note or something. But anyways, so what this uh, today's video is going to focus on is play the game not the play and I say that um, and we'll just hop into it here uh, we're just gonna show we're gonna show a lot of this out of the 4-4 because I've already released a scheme out of the 4-4 for my scheme of the week so um, I'm gonna use that to show and then I'll, when we release the other setups then you'll understand more why I like the 3-3-5 the dollar 3-2-6 and the 4-3s all of those so anyways 4-4 and uh, the main play we like to use is the 2-D so real quick, I want to show you a play out of the Houston Texans playbook. We're actually in Cleveland, but it's the same play. Browns cross, and a lot of people know this play. It's one of the most popular plays in Madden history. Basically, it's just a, a very good play in general. And uh, the one thing a lot of people are having uh, trouble with in Madden 25 is getting something like that to happen. Uh, getting those reactions on the zones, because one minute you'll pick it, one minute you'll intercept it, and then the next minute... You, you won't even react to the ball. And it's like very frustrating, uh, especially if you're me uh, and you put a lot of time in the game. You're like, why are they not responding to the zones? What is going on? What is, why is it like this? Why does this game suck? You know, I want to go get play. I want to go play Madden 11 again. <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, completely understand your problem. Uh, and I share, I share your frustration. But I think it's because we try to focus so much energy on stopping a specific raw or a specific play that we miss the idea of defense. And I'm not saying that it's correct that when you have a guy standing right there, he shouldn't react to the ball. I'm not saying that. Uh, I am saying, though, that there is something we can do to combat that. 
uh, and that's what today's video is about. So play the game, not to play. Uh, and what that whole idea revolves around is, as a defense, we're going to force you to do certain things. So, for example, since we're in the middle of the field here, you guys, and real quick, let me go over this concept. Uh, this is a little underlying uh, concept over the whole idea of play the game, not to play. Uh, blitzing uh, in Madden 25, it should be done from the hash marks, and I say that uh, because... I like to blitz. If I'm blitzing off the right, typically I'm on the right. It, typically the offense is on the right hash. What are hash marks? Well, you see these little, you see these little lines here on the left. This is the left hash mark. And this is the right. Hash. So, for example, if they're on the right hash mark, I'll send pressure off the right. And here's why. Um, and then I'll set up zones to the left. So, like here, we have really, really good coverage to the left. Well, what I'll do off of this is I'll take maybe Johnson here. And maybe put him in a deep blue zone. Maybe put your boy uh, Smith here in a flat or purple zone. And then I know that my responsibility as a user player um, is to cover the vacating area. Because when Johnson goes out, he's going to be about right here. And then uh, about time where they could pass, uh, Smith's going to be here. So this whole little square here uh, is my uh, user area with Lewis. Alright. So... Let's take a look at this. So, what's going to happen here on text and cross is triangle will come over the middle. So, what I like to do is I like to start at uh, X and then go to triangle. So, sit and then jump on triangle, force him to make a bad read. The idea of this is, and it's not just specifically for text and cross. I'm just saying that's kind of what I would do if I was to play something like that. Um, the play doesn't change, guys. When I set up a pressure from the right out of too deep, that's typically what I do. Um, that's typically the setup. You'll see me, uh, I'll put, I'll set it up just like this every single time. And the user control stays the same. It's just based off of what route they're going to, which one I really want to take away. So, like, for example, if they're throwing slants to Jeffrey, then I'll sit and I'll jump the slant. And I'll stay with it. And I can't obviously do it with two, two controllers, but you get the idea. So anyways, what's from the left hash mark on the on the left side, obviously. So you would do something like this. You would go, same setup, just flip it now. And you grab onto Houston. Him in a deep blue zone. And it would be the same thing, just on the opposite side of the field. And now you just are user controlling. And uh, pressure didn't come in that time. I think it's because of the formation. Anywho. So that's the idea. Um, and then, obviously, if we're in the middle of the field, based off of the down and distance. So, uh, for example, if it's second and ten, or first and ten even, you'll see me just do a basic coverage. So, say it's first and ten, and they're at this point in the field. Well, what I'll do is just crash my D-line out to get better pass rush angles. And then I'll put both guys in purple zones. I know I have the middle of the field. And just sit back and say, okay, take five yards, and, and let me see what you're doing. And that's one thing I know a lot of people hate about this game is that zone response thing. But anyway, um, that's the idea of that coverage look. So, say all that to say this. Um, if they're in third and one, however, you, your game plan goes out the window. What you do in third and one is you'll send two-way pressure. And then you'll try to play really aggressive underneath. And you're, what you're trying to do here is force a bad throw so maybe throw right into your user player or whatever and the goal is then to make a bad read because you're mixing everything up but yet it's the same to you so it's all it's all systematic to you you're you're calling plays based off of where they're at on the field they don't know that uh, at least not in the beginning and so you can really start to really lock someone up pretty quickly because the zones I'm telling you to put out there are typically where people will go. They're typically, you know, typically out of tight doubles on, there's two drags, a wheel route, and a, and, a, and a wheel to the right side. So two wheels, two drags, maybe a post. That's the kind of basic reads. But again, we're not trying to stop the play. Uh, let me show you why. So, for example, if, if, if I'm trying to stop, if, I, if I'm running my standard setup out of this and I'm, uh, so say we're sending pressure off of both edges, and this is what we got. Well, if they know this is coming, then look what they can do. Let me just lob it over the top. But the guess, get this, guys. They don't know what you're going to do, and that's the point. Um, defense in this game, and there's obviously ways you could combat that. You could call this guy's cushion. 
different things you can do. The goal is not necessarily for us to stop everything that they're going to be able to do. The goal is to stop the one thing that they are going to do. And I hope that made sense. It didn't even make necessarily make sense to me, but it makes sense in my head. What I mean is, the offense can do a lot of things. You know, there's so I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can do like 13 hot routes at the line of scrimmage to this receiver, and then I could motion him out, and I could do two other ones, and then I could, you know, just keep the same route, and then I could flip the play. I could, there's so many things you can do. So it's not necessarily what you can do because you're always going to be able to beat me. I'm always weak somewhere. So, for example, you know, on the first play that I showed you, I'm weak. Um, I'm weak in the flat, and I'm weak on the drag. So if they did dual drag here, watch this. They do dual drag. I'm kind of screwed because I can't use both of them. But again, it's not that. It's not about that. You're not trying to stop everything that they can do. You're trying to force them to do something different, and uh, that's the idea here. So, play the game, not to play, guys. Spacing on the field is very important. Uh, covering different areas of the field. Think of it as regions. Don't think of it as personnel. That's why I believe you can stay in the four-four all game uh, against most players uh, because it's it's aligned properly. You just need to space the field. So, for example, if they were spread, and I'll wrap it up here for you guys. I know this; these are going to be probably around 15 minutes long each week uh, just because there's a lot to cover. Um, but if they're in, say, spread, curl flats, and you're in your 4-4-D, um, a lot of times they'll just try to throw, and we always base a line of press. A lot of times they'll just try to throw quick flats out of the out of the spread and you see that's not a possibility because of field coverage because of the way the zones react and because of the way that you're the way you're at on the field okay so that proves that that's irrelevant what they were saying about that anyhow um and also again play the field not the play so if if they're if it's like third and two don't call two men under backed off coverage and and act like it's the last play of the game and you just need to stop a deep streak. No, you're going to call something aggressive. You're going to get in the box and you're going to say, you know, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to give you these quick flats. I'm going to, you know, you're disguising it. So you're saying, okay, throw to the flats, throw to the flats, throw to the flats. And then look, they throw to the flats and you have a pick. Okay? It's all about deception. It's all about making the play look the same. It's all about playing the game, not the play. You're adjusting coverages based off of tendencies, based off of situation, not based off of their own, but not based off of all the reads on their play. Okay? So, uh, think about that this week. Hopefully, it will help. Uh, if you have any questions or would like to have some further information on it, let me know in the comments below. Sorry we went long today. Hope the video played okay. If it didn't, let me know. I'll work on it. Try to get it fixed. Thanks for watching again, guys. Really appreciate it. Hope this series helps you out a lot. We'll see you next week.